Our next contributor, Matthew D. Blanchard, is a performer and storyteller, as well as a uh, AIDS, HIV AIDS uh, advocate and disability um, community organizer. Welcome, Matthew D. Blanchard. She's not flat to their water, dude. <laughs> Um, I worked hard with my therapist to decide uh, whether or not to um, bring up what sometimes for me is the big elephant in the room, and that is um, my awkwardly misshapen mouth. Um, so I just want to say if it is difficult to understand what I'm saying, um, I can't really apologize for that. Um, it will be, but I will try to be understood. Thank you. My essay is... Um, a story, um, an intense story, of my disfigurement and a look backwards as to perhaps its causes. Um, it's a powerful essay, I think. I'm a novice to this, so uh, forgive my inhibition and nervousness. Um, and I'll just read. Suffering through childhood and adolescence of incessant ridicule and fagbating. I planned my escape from the double locked and triple chained closets of conservative southeastern Virginia. My choice to remain in Virginia to attend university was a decision I regretted for a very long time. During my freshman and sophomore years of college, I remained stubbornly closeted despite the constant haranguing and harassment not by homophobic straight students, but by the queer kids on campus. Early on in my freshman year, within weeks of my arrival, my loosely veiled cyberspace identity was discovered by a very out, proud, and loud queer classmate of mine. After recognizing some photos I had posted of myself in gay.com chat rooms, he wrote to me, threatening to expose to our entire community, then he did just that. The aggressively dispassionate and unsympathetic queer kids on campus ridiculed me incessantly bred to condemn and constantly contradict all accusations against my good Catholic conformist upbringing, I adamantly maintained that I was not in any way a faggot. Homosexuality was a sin. I begged the, culprit, the culprits guilty of gay on gay cyberbullying and rumor mongering to let me be free to live my life at its own normal pace. I did not want them to force me out of the closet sooner than I felt comfortable enough to break down its doors. I especially did not want people telling me who and what I was before I decided for myself. I continued to traipse around in cyberspace chat rooms hunting for acceptance, enlightenment, and fulfillment of my unbridled lust. Still, I remained closeted, and in an undeniably defensive maneuver, I began to com comport myself publicly with a conscious, better than thou air. I recoiled further into the enticing yet destructive sexual subculture of gay cyberspace, welcomed into the open arms of, whole different brand, of a whole different brand of hateful, dispassionate, and unsympathetic gay youth and men, I fell into the habit of clandestine weekend trips to Washington, D.C. for extended sessions of party and play. I frolicked there in the unabashed bacchanalia of sex parties where drugs were lavished upon me and condoms were rarely in sight. Yearning daily for the opportunity to accept and explore my sexuality more fully and openly, I decided to spend my junior year abroad studying in Paris, France. There, in the city of lights, I discovered bathhouses and boyhood romance, mature adult love and mutual adoration. I returned to Virginia ready to throw my unremittingly out and loud gay pride in the faces of all the ferocious dykes and fags on campus who had tormented me the prior years. But disaster was looming. My final semester of university study was tragically interrupted by some devastating news, news that I had come to expect. On February 13, 2002, I called into an anonymous HIV testing center to obtain my results. Sure enough, I was diagnosed positive. In an attempt to act responsibly after the fact, I notified each of my sex partners of my seroconversion, including two gay students on campus. Word spread fast. In order to brutally expose my horish escapades and deviance to the world, anonymous groups of anti-gay, AIDS-phobic bashers and trashers began to, to commit crimes of pure, unrelenting hatred against me. 
The ostracization I had first experienced as a holier than now homo hater was carved into the cement stone of the cinder block walls of my dormitory hallways, tacked on my door in scribbled sketches of guns, nooses, and skating epithets, sliced and slashed into the offer of my car tires, and tagged in soap on my car windshield. AIDS whore, AIDS vermin, queer slut, you killed my boyfriend. <clears throat> Needless to say, the hatred aimed at me by the kids on campus at the time of my diagnosis translated into my own vehement contempt and hatred of the greater LGBTQ culture and community. My unmitigated misery as a victim of this venomous hatred in turn intensified my suppressed queer kid self-loathing. In a last ditch effort to free myself from such disgrace, discrimination, and persecution by my peers, but tormented by the truth in queer kid judgments of my sexual irresponsibility, I fled cross country. Amongst the ultra liberal gay friendly folk of Northern California, I hope to find the love and acceptance that have eluded me most of my young life. Thank you.